we're going to do a quick scallop dish with some Swiss chard and polenta. So Jasper, I want to flavor the Swiss chard. So why don't okay. you start with some garlic and right. ginger. And I know what you're saying. Ginger, is that an Italian ingredient? It sure is when you think about all of the spices of course, that yeah. were brought to Italy through northern Italy, especially, especially Venice. So if you've never seen Swiss chard, this is what it looks like when you get it in the grocery store. And when you bring it home, you really want to wash it well. And it has these lovely tender leaves that are like spinach, a little bit sturdier. But then it has this kind of sturdier stalk. And this you can take off and use for stir fries. I'm sure you probably yeah, have some wonderful. neat ways that you do it. Because I just want to use the leaves today. So for the recipe, you want to get going a little bit of olive oil in a pan, and then just flavor that oil with some garlic and some ginger. Did you put the ginger in already? I'm going to do it right okay, now. Okay, and, and this is neat to do it right with a rasp because then you don't have to peel the ginger, and the skin stays right behind. So it's it's a great little. It smells uh, great. It's a great little technique. You get the juice from the ginger too. You get too. the juice from the ginger, and it's a great technique. Is that enough, Marianne? Yeah, I think that's fine. So believe it or not, we're not going to cook the Swiss chard in boiling water. We're going to put it dry right in the pan. And I think it's a great way to kind of preserve a lot of the nutrients of Swiss chard. We're going to make some polenta for this. So okay. we've got about three and a half cups of cold water and about two thirds of a cup of cornmeal. And we're going to put it in cold. We're going to mix it in cold. Many people think that you have to start the water first, get it hot, and then they worry about getting the, uh, the polenta too lumpy. So in goes all of this Swiss chard right in the pan. So while we have the cornmeal in the water, I'm going to give that a little bit of salt, not too much. And you say, where's the scallop part of this? Well, here it is right here. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they're really nice. These are dry scallops. We should tell them what that means. Well, there's, there's really uh, two ways that scallops are tr treated commercially. And if you go down to the piers in New Bedford or wherever the scallop boats are, you'll see scallops in these big cloth bags. Mm -hmm. And those are the dry scallops. The wet scallops are for commercial use, and they're, they're soaked with um, trisodium phosphate. Right, they plump them up water. with water. It plumps them up. It helps them keep their color, but it's uh, not what you want to use. You can always tell when you, when you get wet scallops, because even after they drain them, when you cook them, all the moisture comes out. So first of all, take your scallops, and I look for first the dry feel, but p look for pieces. There's a piece of the shell. Mm -hmm. This little piece we call the strap. We clean that off. The other thing I look for, too, in scallops is you look for this beautiful iridescent shine, that color. Beautiful. You know they're fresh. And you know they're fresh. And as you cook them, as you caramelize them, they'll uh, get more of an opaque white color as they Plus, cook. smell is an important part of fish, right, Jasper? It sure is. And it basically, they should smell sweet. Really and sm sweet. Smell like the ocean. Mm hmm And that thing they call the fishy smell, that's, that's a no-no. Because good, that's good old. fish doesn't smell fishy. So okay, so those are all good things yeah. to know. So it's important not to overcook them. It's so like all other shellfish. The shellfish that you can eat raw and enjoy raw. Mm -hmm. All you're trying to do is warm them up. You're not really trying to cook them mm -hmm. per se. So okay, uh, so they're seasoned with salt and yeah. pepper. And want... I just want to show people how this has now just wilted down to almost nothing. All right, uh, I gave this. Excuse me, I gave this a little bit of uh, olive oil. See, it's all finished. I mm -hmm. just want to give it a little glisten. Yeah. And now some salt. It's got that nice, you can smell the garlic and, and the ginger. And it's all fresh. Here. A little bit of pepper. And now I can take this out. This is done. It's got a little bit of crunch to it. We're going to put it right here in this pan until we're ready to plate this up. So this is just going to stay right there. And keep mixing that polenta because we don't want that to, uh, we don't want that to get too thick. It's thickening up nicely now. Okay, now that's hot, so I'm going to put the scallops right in. I like to use this nonstick pan because mm -hmm. it gives me a little bit more control. So in they go. And don't Maybe be in a nice. hurry. Don't be in a hurry to turn them. Okay, so about a half a cup, that's about a half a cup of ricotta goes in. Nice. And then with it, I want to have some parsley, mm -hmm. some flat leaf Italian parsley. I think I can turn them. Now you see how yep. they're starting to get 
a little bit of color on them. You just really want to control this because you don't want to. And the color, it's the sugar and the scallops that are caramelized. That help you to caramelize. And as you can see, I only added, so I just seasoned flavor. this pan with a little bit of olive oil. So I'm going to take this out now. It goes to the butter. All right. And the lemon juice. Mm. The butter gets a nice hazelnut flavor. Nice hazelnut flavor. And then I take these scallops. Come right back in. They go right back in the pan. Just like that. And you see how nice and glazy they get with the butter and the olive and the uh, lemon juice. That's just mm -hmm. very, very pretty, just like that. That's looking good. Okay, I think we can plate this, and this didn't take a lot of time at all. I'm gonna take some of that polenta and put it right in the center of the dish. I want a puddle of this, mm -hmm. just a little puddle. Now, I take some of the Swiss chard, put it right over the mm, polenta. Very nice. Isn't that pretty? It's like that. And we want to take these, and I told you three is enough per person mm -hmm. because they're so large. Yeah, they're really large. There's one. 